when we see the arterial supply of the urinary bladder it is going to be supplied by anterior division of the internal iliac artery so most of the branches of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery which is going to supply which are going to supply this bladder so suppose this one is the internal iliac artery with the anterior division So from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery, the superior vesical artery is going to supply the bladder. Along with that, it also going to be supplied by this inferior vesical artery. In case of the female, this inferior vesical artery is replaced by the vaginal artery. Along with that, this anterior division of the internal iliac artery gives off the obturator artery, which also supply the this urinary bladder and the inferior gluteal artery also supply the urinary bladder in case of the female the uterine artery is also responsible for providing the blood supply to the urinary bladder so we can tell that this urinary bladder is going to be supplied by all the branches of the entry division of the internal iliac artery except two branches one is the middle rectal artery and one is the internal pudendal artery so this middle rectal and the internal pudendal both are the branches of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery which do not provide blood supply to the urinary bladder while remaining all the branches they are going to supply this urinary bladder when we see the venous drainage of the urinary bladder it is going to be drained into the venous plexus which is present within the space of the red gs so at the entero inferior surfaces of the urinary bladder within the space of the red gs this vesical plexus is going to be formed and this vesical plexus is going to be drained into the internal iliac vein after passing through the lateral ligament of the urinary bladder now when we see the nerve supply of the urinary bladder it is important to understand but it is more or less concerned with the physiology of the urinary bladder so we are going to deal this topic in a very brief manner so this urinary bladder is going to be supplied by the sympathetic fibers as well as the parasympathetic fibers sympathetic fibers are from the T11 to L2 spinal nerves and this sympathetic fibers they are going to supply the internal urethral sphincter which is also called as a sphincter vesicae so in case of the male the sphincter vesicae it is present and that's why the sympathetic innervation to that particular area is more in case of male and the contraction of this sphincter vesicae because of this sympathetic fibers will lead to the prevention of the backflow of the semen during ejaculation along with that the sympathetic fibers they are also giving nerve supply to the detrusal muscle the sympathetic fibers from t11 to l2 they supply the sphincter vesicae which is the sphincter internal urethral sphincter which is situated near the neck of the bladder mainly in case of male along with that the sympathetic fiber also supply the detrusal muscle so this stimulus to the sympathetic fibers will lead to the Uh, the contraction of the sphin sphincter vesicae and the uh, inhibition to the detrusal muscle so the sense of filling it is because of this sympathetic fibers so with the help of the sympathetic stimulation person cannot void the urine he can feel the sense of filling inside the urinary bladder while the parasympathetic stimulation to the urinary bladder is via s2 s3 and s4 spinal nerves and that is collectively formed the pelvic splanchnic nerves this pelvic splanchnic nerve will lead to the relaxation of the sphincter vesicae muscle and the contraction of the detrusal muscle so the voiding of the urine it is because of the parasympathetic stimulation so the act of the voiding it is because of the parasympathetic stimulation while the sense of filling it is because of the sympathetic stimulation of the urinary bladder so this is all about the anatomy of the urinary bladder hope you understand well thanks for watching